What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, and I'm back again with another one. Hey, yo, can you do me a super huge favor, please? You know what I'm saying? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications so you know when your boy's dropping these doses, okay? I appreciate all of y'all straight up because I ain't too proud to ask, okay? And before we get knee deep into this one, I need y'all to do me an additional favor, okay? Do you see the information on your screen right now if you can't see it it is the links to my uh twitch channel primarily is what i want y'all to focus on and my mixer channel here's the deal i love interacting with you guys on youtube i'm still gonna do it problem is we have some consistency issues with youtube so your boy gotta spread the love okay so i'm gonna have exclusive content on all three platforms, but primarily on Twitch. I'll still do videos like this. I'll chop it up in the mornings or whatever for you guys and do other material as well with my broadband bully brethren or my PNTS peoples, you know what I'm saying? But my biggest project to date and a lot of my content is gonna be exclusive to Twitch. So you're definitely gonna wanna follow me at twitch.tv forward slash mighty most 2000 as you see on your screen okay all right and with that being said i'm gonna do something for mixer too we might do some xbox game streams and stuff there to mixer but again your boy gotta spread the love to keep the content pouring to the people all right the people's champ gotta keep it coming with that being said let's get into it you know what i mean let's get into it but before but you know what one more thing too one more thing too do me a super huge favor y'all I need a real big favor. I need y'all to also go and follow my boy, Next Gen 720, okay? Next Gen 720 got content coming out the wazoo. Please follow your boy, okay? So let's get into it. All right. Now, here's the deal, folks. Here is the deal. There's a lot of information out there in regards to uh, E3 2019 that I think a lot of us may have missed inadvertently. All right. And I think that information may have been missed because we were focused on how well Microsoft was going to do. Um, you know, did they bomb or did they succeed? And then, you know, some of the, the, the stuff shown on the main floor. But here goes some honorable mentions and some eye-opening stuff that I think that you guys really need to be made abreast about. And I get it. A lot of you may have not caught this because you're in your day-to-day -day travels, doing your stuff, taking care of your families. Who has time besides lowly <laughs> MM2K that ain't got nothing else better to do but to soak in all this content? But that's what I'm here for, baby. So let's check it out. First and foremost, there was an Aaron Greenberg interview done with Gamertag Radio, man. Big ups to Gamertag Radio. See, here's the thing about them. You got a lot of people out here talking about we going to E3, we doing it big. And all they doing is, 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 is sipping on lattes and pina coladas, you know what I'm saying, and dancing, doing the jig in the club. I don't care about you sightseeing, baby. I need you to bring me the gamer news. So my people say GTR Gamer Tag Radio, Danny, Vicious6996, also known as Paris, and Pete, you know what I'm saying? Pete Rock, they brought you the news. They have 40 clips of information. Check it out. Full clips. You know what I'm saying? Go check them out after your boy's video. With that being said, one of the things that they did is they brought us gaming news about from Aaron Greenberg directly. Aaron Greenberg said in an interview with Danny Pena of Gamertag Radio. He talked, a, he talked a lot about Xbox and their presentation, stuff like that. And here goes some takeaways, some big takeaways from that interview. First and foremost, he said that Xbox's strategy, and you heard this a lot, but Xbox's strategy is now becoming more gamer-centric, not device-centric, okay? Now that's the moniker they rolling with. You know how your boy MM2K feels about that, you know what I'm saying, to where I don't know how successful you can be without getting your, your hardcore, your core gamers motivated, and I'm sorry, your core gamers, or console-centric gamers. I mean, look at it. Sony was able to do its big turnaround with a lot of mindshare work that they did at the end of last gen. 
So with that being the case, I don't see how that being the moniker and then there not being that full throat of support behind, you know, giving some type of satisfaction or improving your perception with your hardcore or your console gamers. I don't see how you can abandon that and see much success is what I'm trying to say, okay? Um, in addition to the whole device-centric opposed to gamer-centric thing, <sighs> another point that, again, boggles me is Aaron Greenberg said that their means of supporting the console isn't necessarily the game. You know what I'm saying? Is it necessarily bringing value to the box as far as the content? But it's Xbox All Access, okay? Now, if y'all don't remember what Xbox All Access is, that is Xbox's finance program where they're doing it with various uh, window stores that you see in the mall. And there's only so many limited window stores throughout the continental US or across the globe, you know? But when you go to certain window stores, you could finance an Xbox One X um, and Xbox Live and, and I guess Xbox Game Pass um, as well, including Ultimate. The fact that Aaron Greenberg brought this up, this might be a big push by Microsoft. And he says that that's their way of bringing quote unquote value to the console. So again, this is mind boggling to me because we're taking two phrases here and we're applying two totally different definitions to it. And again, it, it seems like to me that it's not that Xbox is out of touch or Microsoft or Windows Gaming is out of touch. They're not trying to be in touch. They're taking the questions that we have and they're repurposing them in a different package. So again, their answer to value to the console is letting you finance an Xbox One X or maybe a Scarlet, whatever, along with Game Pass Ultimate. And I don't think that's what gamers meant by value to the console, but I digress. Another thing that he brought up is that Halo Infinite will definitely release on both consoles, meaning, well, both console sets, meaning this generation set of consoles and the next generation set of consoles. However, he was not asked, you know, if there's gonna be different games for each set of consoles, like, is there going to be a Halo Infinite version for the Xbox One family? Or is there going to be a Halo and, and a Halo Infinite for uh, the Scarlet version of consoles? Or is it just going to be one game that scales up and down depending upon which console you put it into? So, still a big question out there, even though Giant Bomb gave the best attempt to, to your boy, as far as I'm concerned, at pinning fin Phil down to get an answer to this. They specifically asked Phil in that interview, are there going to be multiple scoos for Halo Infinite? To where Phil would try to gather his thoughts and said, I think I understand what you're trying to ask. I hate when they do that, what you're trying to ask. Like, I don't know what the hell's coming out of my mouth. No, you don't know how to answer it. And he just gave a bunch of business babble, which really didn't answer the question that he said they're still looking into it, so, so to speak. But I thought that was another interesting takeaway. Then um, Aaron Greensburg, which I thought was real comical, stated that Windows Gaming or quote unquote Xbox, you know, the moniker they're trying to go under. Uh, Xbox Gaming takes the good and the bad as far as comments are concerned. Now, this is very interesting being that courtesy of Next Gen 720 and other people through the gaming community, we notice Phil disassociate himself from people on social media that were critical of the Xbox showing. So I don't know what type of signals that sent out. And to me, the most mind boggling and, the, and, and, and I think really the most uh, insulting thing is what Chris Steele, a uh, member of BGST had to say about Phil unfollowing him. Phil used to follow Chris Steele, BGST member again. And what Phil did is he unfollowed him, followed him back again, and unfollowed him again so he can get the notification that something was going on with Phil unfollowing him, right? And that was Chris's account, again, of what happened, but you have other matching accounts of that as well. So that seems real petty, right? And, and, and real insulting 
from the good old Phil Spencer. You know what I'm saying? So again, I just thought that was comical that he would even throw that out there. And last but not least, I thought it was very interesting that uh, he dodged a question from Danny as it relates to third party titles coming day and date to Game Pass. I find this interesting because like I said, Microsoft has a long hill to climb as it comes to next gen. People are, I think, in, wrapped into the fact that Xbox Game Pass has the most subscribers right now out of all of the gaming services. They, they, they tote millions. But within that millions, there's been a lot of deals. Get Game Pass for a dollar for 8,000 years. There's been a lot of revenue breaking deals to get you on. And, and, and that's okay because they're thinking about saturation. Um, so they have more saturation than all other services. But with that being said, as I always been saying, as I've been saying as of late, once PlayStation now goes day and date, that's going to be a more, uh, appealing to the masses, uh, service as far as that's concerned for console games. Then on PC, you have Google Stadia that is combined with Uplay Plus and maybe any and more services, uh, origins might come on there. Who knows? And then you got Steam. So for PC gamers, you know, as far as cloud gaming is concerned, you have those more appealing alternatives. So where does that leave Microsoft? And if you're talking about revenue in the black with this is concerned, yeah, for like the first three to five years, it's all a saturation game. But if you got all these other services coming and killing your saturation within the market, how successful are you? And how did you leverage Mindshare to help you have a stable foundation within this, this, this new this new services based uh, product uh, uh, um, um, uh, market. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. I don't know. But on to the next one. Pactor interview. Okay. Pactor clearly is getting a lot of hate based off of a false narrative. And that false narrative is that Pactor truly believes that the PlayStation 5 is going to be $800. As I urge everybody all the time, please do your homework, people. We try to have smart, they ain't always gotta be civil. You know what I'm saying? Like I always tell you, you can come with me or come at me, but they at least gotta be rooted in some type of, some level of intelligence and rooted in fact, okay? You can't do that when you just operate off of sound bites and snippets. So clearly you have a plethora of people within the gaming community that just lived off of a snippet as far as Michael Pactor predicting $800 PlayStation 5. And that's clearly not what he did. If you listen to the interview, like I said, and like others are now coming out and saying, he was joking. He was just trying to make a point. Well, he was asked by Jeff Keighley, and this was via Gamer Slice, uh, Jeff Keighley's YouTube channel, gaming channel. But it was via Gamer Slice at E3 that Keighley started off the conversation saying, say something wild for the uh, reset era forums, you know what I'm saying? He said, okay, well, PlayStation 5 is gonna be $100. You know what I'm saying? And Jeff Keighley during the interview asked him, hey, you really don't believe that? He's like, no, but he's like, I don't know what the price is gonna be. He said, but I just, but what I'm trying to say is it's not gonna be cheap, all right? So again, let's not fall off of sound bites and snippets. With that being said, the more notable thing, and the reason why I truly think people were just going off the sound bite is because Pactor <laughs> was giving Jeff Kigley that work about PlayStation not being there, and I wholeheartedly agree. And I normally don't agree with Pactor. And trust me, this ain't no Xbox fanboy or any of the other stuff. The truth is the truth, people. We got to come down the middle, okay? You know, I'm not going to damage control for anybody. PlayStation not showing up is not good for gamers, okay? It's not about simply winning, judging by the lowest common denominator. Microsoft conference was horrible. But again, I always tell y'all to stop comparing the poop sandwich to the cup of pee, okay? Neither one of them are good, regardless of which one goes down smoother, okay? So, Pactor was giving them that work. Jeff Keighley was trying to damage control being the PlayStation shrill courtesy or for benefit of uh, Kojima that he's known to be, and it just wasn't working. So kudos to Pactor, all right? Um, but Pactor, also says that he thinks um, streaming sub services will fail. Um, and his subscription services like, uh, you know, Game Pass and stuff like that and Stadia uh, 
subscription services. He's not a big fan of them, but he thinks having a fee to have access to a store that allows you to cloud game, he thinks that's going to be more successful. So we'll see. All right. Um, but that's a perfect segue into my last point, which is Gamer Slice also did an interview with Phil Harrison, the head of this whole Stadia attempt, okay? Now, during this interview, the, I think the biggest takeaways were Stadia, per Phil Harrison, says that they are, they are setting themselves up to be a base streaming service for gaming, okay? I mean, they are going to be the, the, the head streaming in charge, okay? Um, I find that interesting because it doesn't necessarily work off a dedicated device system. It allows you to go on, a, on a, it allows you to move on the go with your gaming. And that's pretty good in some regards, but there's some cons to it as well. We're going to get into that. He also focused on and stating that they don't put a paywall between you being able to do multiplayer. Now that's interesting because at first at launch, you got to pay something in order to access their games, you know? So that's not true at first, but ultimately when the free service comes out, if you've bought a game off of the Google Stadia store, you are not gonna have to pay something in order to do multiplayer. He says he thinks that's key to not be struck behind a paywall. And that's a direct shot at Microsoft. <laughs> and you know, Microsoft took direct shots at Google Stadia during the giant bomb interview courtesy of Phil. So hey, it's all par for the court. See, competition ain't so bad, right? It brings you goodies, okay? It depends on if as long as it's consumer-based competition and not just access-based competition, it's good for the consumer, right? But the biggest thing from this Gamer Slice interview, and again, why I just, I'm not the biggest Jeff Keighley fan. I don't know the guy personally. I don't know much about him. I've seen him here and there when he was on, uh, what was that channel? The G4 TV? I, I, I never, he, he was always a background guy to me, okay? Never stood out to me. Don't know how he became this famous. He does have a passion for presenting games. I'll give him that, even though he's a Kojima stand. But again, this just proves to me that I just, I, I can't I can't rock out solely with Jeff Keighley. He talked about how he had all these questions for Phil Harrison in regards to some of the largest doubts in regards to the whole stadium thing. But he didn't address the 500 pound gorilla or elephant in the room which is bandwidth, which is data caps. Did not address it at all. What's the deal with that? Well, someone said MM2K, you gotta remember, Gamer Slice is owned by, uh, is, is a YouTube channel, which is owned by Google, just like Stadia. And it's all apparent that Phil Harrison and company are trying to really, really, really control this message and keep everything close to the vest. And they are very, very concerned about this question about data caps. They don't really have a viable answer for it and they're not trying to address it. So that speaks volumes. All right. And that's it from your boy MM2K. So three big takeaway interviews that I think a lot of people may have missed during the E3 uh, presentations. Again, first one, Aaron Greenberg interview with Gamertag Radio, check it out. Pack your interview with Gamer Slice via YouTube. Look at the damn video before you come up and start hopping out the window for these headlines. And lastly, Gamer Slice interview with Phil Harrison. So that's it from your boy MM2K. Like I always say, you know, tell me what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Because who cares what I think? But if you like what I had to say, you know what I'm saying? You can catch me on the corner of every boulevard. Check the links below to follow me. Hey, yo, I do a show with your people. Snow Bunny, Dirk Griggity, my boy Nethos. It is called Scram Punks. We do it every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check it out on Dirk Griggity's channel or just look up hashtag Scram Punks for more information. And last but not least, follow my brethren, the Broadband Bullies. We out here doing the damn thing, all right? Check out that Discord link where we be cutting it up in there, all right? Check out that Patreon link because we need your help in order to continue with this content, all right? And last but not least, check out that gear, man. You know why, because it's fly. And as always, as always, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.